Question 1. The value of G in the diagram below is... Adjacent angles that make up one revolution add up to 360 degrees. So you can see the G and the 50 make up one whole circle, one whole 360 degree loop. So if we have 360 degrees, take away that 50, we'll get the value of the rest there, the G. So 360 degrees minus 50 equals 310 degrees. Question 2. The angles marked below, in black, are a pair of alternate angles, vertically opposite angles, co-interior angles, or corresponding angles. These are alternate angles. I like to think of them as being on alternate sides of that single almost vertical transversal line we call it. So there are alternate angles. Question 3. The value of P in the diagram below is... Alternate angles are equal and those that 70 and that P are in the alternate positions there. They're on either side of the transversal, transversal and they're in between the two parallel lines. So they're equal to each other so they're both, uh, both in the same positions there. And so P will equal 70. You can see they're both acute angles less than 90 degrees. So all, once, the, uh, once we establish the lines are parallel, all the acute angles are equal to each other and all the obtuse angles are equal to each other if they're set up like that. Question 4. The value of N below is 110 degrees, 220 degrees, 70 degrees or 90 degrees. These are in co-interior positions, they're together inside that section there. And co-interior angles are supplementary, which means they add up to 180 degrees. You can see one of them is 110 degrees, which we'd call an obtuse angle, and N is an acute angle, or less than 90 degrees. So together they'll add up to 180 degrees. So what we can do is 180 degrees minus the degrees that were given, 110, to find uh, the value of N there. So N is going to be 70 degrees. It's uh, an amount that uh, adds up to 180 degrees with 110. Question 5. The value of X in the diagram below is... Now corresponding angles are equal and why that's uh, relevant here is that you can see the 70 degrees, it's an acute angle, it's in the top right hand corner of what I'd call the top intersection of the two lines there and the x degrees is in the top right hand corner of the bottom intersection. So they're in what I'd call matching or corresponding positions there and corresponding angles are equal so we can say that x equals 70 degrees. Once you've got one um, size of one angle in a parallel set of parallel lines and a transversal here you've got pretty much every other angle every acute angle in that diagram is 70 degrees whether it's where the X is whether it's uh, diagonally below to the left of uh, the bottom left hand corner of where the 70 is etc we can trust that so 70 degrees for the value of X there Question 6. In the diagram, AB and CD are parallel lines because co-interior angles are complementary, the corresponding angles are equal, the adjacent angles are equal, 
or the alternate angles are equal. Two lines are parallel if corresponding angles are equal or alternate angles are equal or co-interior angles are supplementary or add up to 180 degrees. If one of those conditions is, uh, is true for a set, of a set of lines, then they can be established as true parallel lines. So here, the 70s are in corresponding positions. We, we've got a top right hand corner, 70 in the top intersection and a top right hand corner in the bottom intersection of 70 as well. So that shows that uh, even though there's no parallel line markers or indicators on, um, on either of A, B or C, D, by having those two angles in corresponding positions and indicated that they're both 70 degrees, that uh, passes the test of parallel lines of corresponding angles being equal. So we can then go ahead and draw parallel line symbols on A, B and C, D. Question 7. The value of M in the diagram below is 50 degrees, 130 degrees, 220 degrees or 310 degrees. Okay, we can say that corresponding angles are equal. So, and adjacent angles that make up a straight angle add up to 180 degrees. They're both some rules or facts there that we're going to be using to find the value of M. So if we took 180 degrees, we took 50 degrees away from that, we would find the uh, 130 degrees for the angle that's just below the 50 there. That would be 130 degrees and that would then be in corresponding position to the M. So there's a number of different ways to solve this question actually but what we've done here I've chosen to use the straight angle of that diagonal uh, sort of transversal the almost vertical line there and say okay 50 plus the angle below it will add up to 180 degrees so I took 50 away from that to get 130 in the bottom right hand corner of that top intersection and then that's in a, uh, a corresponding exactly matching position that the M is in. So I established there that M must equal 130 degrees as well. You could also do corresponding angles mean that that 50 is also straight below, up, kind of just above the M as well. And then you could use a straight angle from that point and take 50 away from 180 at that point in that bottom intersection. So. Uh, that's a, a long way of saying that there are more than more than one way to do this question. Question 8. The value of y below is... Corresponding angles are equal and vertically opposite angles are equal. So we can use that first one, corresponding angles are equal, to say that the angle just to the top right hand corner of Y is also going to be 70. Because 70 is, a, is in a corresponding position, uh, 70 degrees is in the top right hand corner of the top intersection. And we'd know that uh, the angle size of the top right hand corner in the bottom intersection is 70 as well, which is diagonally opposite the Y degrees there. So we can have 70 below it there, just near the Y. And then we could say vertically opposite angles are equal. So that establishes uh, that Y also equals 70 degrees. There's also a principle that says every acute angle in parallel lines is, uh, is the same as each other and every obtuse angle in parallel lines are the same as each other. So Y is uh, looking acute and 70 is certainly an acute angle. So Y equals 70 just from that perspective. Question 9. The value of A below is 70 degrees, 180 degrees, 90 degrees or 40 degrees. Uh, 
The rule we're using here is adjacent angles that make up a straight angle add up to 180 degrees. So 70 and 70 and A will equal 180 degrees. So the way to work backwards to find the value of A there is to start with 180 degrees, take the 70 degrees away, take another 70 degrees away and we'll be left with the A sized angle, in this case which would be 40 degrees. So take away the ones we know and then we'll find the unknown one, the A. Question 10. The value of D in the diagram below is... Co-interior angles are supplementary or adding up to 180 degrees. So here, if we imagine that all these lines were extended, the top horizontal line extending to the left, the bottom horizontal line extending to the left, and the other almost vertical line going upwards and downwards, we'd get a traditional parallel lines and a transversal kind of diagram. And if we did that, we might recognize a bit more clearly that D and 82 are in co-interior positions. So they'll add up to 180 degrees there. So they add up to 180 degrees in that position there. It's not easily recognizable, but if we extend all the lines, as I said, uh, you might be able to recognize it a bit more clearly. So we'll do 180 degrees minus that 82 to find out what D will be. And we have a D value there in that diagram of 98 degrees.